Okay, salam alaikum and uh, very good morning <coughs> to all. Uh, welcome to the uh, new semester. And uh, I think the sum of you is the last course with me, fourth course, which is deep water maintenance. So uh, basically, if we will uh, talk about the asset management and maintenance, so uh, this course somehow is uh, uh, not the main stream, but it is a supporting course because whenever we are talking about uh, asset management and maintenance, so there are many assets now, technical assets with oil and gas companies or energy companies are in offshore region. And in offshore region like uh, uh, offshore structures, uh, wind turbines and many other. So in a way, uh, because this is a specialist area, uh, which in which only those are working might know. So in view of that, uh, to, to increase the horizon. So in this course, <clears throat> it is somehow a bit introduction of the oil and gas activities and what type of structures are being needed over there and how we have to run the structure. So in a way, uh, this is, uh, it will give you a new flavor. Those are not related to the oil and gas industry. It is uh, basically an introduction plus what type of structures and uh, how we maintain such structures or what are the basic requirement. So this is the fundamental of <coughs> uh, this course, right? So as uh, I said, uh, uh, the composition of this course, although it is deep water, but we will uh, give, we will start with an introduction and overview of offshore structure, which means why do we need what are the different purposes? So for that reason, uh, we can uh, go a little bit understanding of the activities which are being performed into the offshore region for oil and gas exploration per se or um, for other purposes like the wind energy uh, or wind farm or so on and so forth. So with that reason, as the most important and significant activities <coughs> are oil and gas activities. So uh, we, in the first part or in the beginning, uh, we will get some, not in detail, but some understanding of what are the basic activities, right? Uh, because uh, we have to search uh, for oil and gas reserve we have to determine where, which area we have to go, right? So we will get an overview and it is an interesting overview. After that, uh, we will be looking that what type of structures to be needed at which stage of activities, right? And the permanently stalled structures and so we will get this, the overall overview of structures. And as we know that the oceans or the seas, our coastal area, they are a few meter deep water to uh, some kilometer deep water, right? The deepest oceans uh, or the deepest depth of the ocean is more than 10 kilometer, right? So as last 60 over years, uh, we are uh, doing this uh, offshore activities for oil and gas and other purposes. So all 70 years. So in the beginning, right? Because uh, with the maturity of technology, so earlier when the ch technologies were not so mature, so most of the activities were in shallow depth. And now, with the understanding and advancement of technologies. Now we are uh, exploring and working and producing oil in much deeper water 
which is three kilometer or four kilometer deep water, all right? So as the water depth is increasing, the requirement of the structures are also being uh, increasing. And as the name of the course is deep water, which means uh, because deep water is a, a new, our uh, once we in this millennium, we are reaching into deeper water. But in the beginning, we will also get what were the basic differences in between shallow water structure and deep water structure. And so that is the first part, which most probably I have given in today's lecture, right? Uh, which is uh, 118 slide, which is which are here, right? And then <clears throat> we will be having some introduction onto the deep water floating production structure. Because uh, there are, uh, in general, two type of structure which are rigid, which means just like building, right? Petronas Twin Tower, it is a rigid structure, right? Uh, rigid in a sense, in a general sense, rigid structure, but under extreme wind condition, the building can move one meter or so, right? So, but on the ground, it is rigid, rigid in position. And floating structures, right? Because just like the structure can deviate to a larger distance, right? For example, uh, 10 meter or 20 meter from their original position. We, and their support with the base is not rigid, right? Like the uh, cable support, like mooring, right? So. Uh, floating structures like uh, ship structures, but uh, we have to restrict their movement, so we have to moor them, right? So uh, for wherever we are going to deeper water, so most of the structures uh, or the structures are being designed as a floating or flexible structures, right? So as we uh, our major emphasis is there, so in that. Uh, we will, uh, in the first part, uh, we will go an overview probably today, right? And after that, we will look whenever any floating structures, even like a ship, if some of you uh, are uh, working or have experience on fluid mechanics or hydraulic, so the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic stability is one of the most important thing and the terms like uh, buoyancy and the weight or uplift. So these terms and these some technical term or a bit uh, a review of fluid mechanics where we will be talking Archimedes principle again, right? For the stability of the floating structure. So the second part of that, uh, there are variety of the structure right, as it is being given. So we will be discuss uh, a bit uh, on to them, uh, which are spar, tension leg platform, semi-submersible, uh, floating, FPSO, ship-like structures, and last uh, more than a decade, right, because uh, uh, the maintaining a structure and uh, the, the main structure onto the surface uh, if it is becoming problem particularly in harsh weather so most of the uh, production systems are being now technologies are maturing at the sea bottom which is subsea system right and in the future we can see that uh, most of the system mechanical system or drilling system will be at the seabed, maybe three, 400 uh, kilometer away from the coast and the control room will be at the coast side. So the uh, crew is not required to be housed uh, on in, in onto the uh, sea structure, right? Four, 500 kilometer away from the coast, one month away from the family. It is like every day you can join your office in the evening you can go back, right? So uh, these systems are becoming more popular. 
and uh, we are also getting uh, challenges and particularly now the challenges are also coming as uh, even in shallow water structure right so we have added uh, some new topic as uh, the expert panel have advised on the decommissioning because every structure it has its service life right uh, so the uh, offshore structures and even the offshore structures have service life uh, much lesser than the uh, onshore structures like building or bridges so when the structures will reach to their notional life so we will not just leave the structure we have to uh, dismantle and decompose right so it uh, there is a, a special methods and techniques which is uh, called decommissioning and i think in your batch first time i will be dealing with that which i have included into the offshore structure challenges right uh, then uh, some on the pipeline system and some other miscellaneous topic that we will be uh, discussing right so that is somehow is our <clears throat> uh, overview of the subject and uh, what is our basic requirement right so as uh, you have seen now uh, instead of two weekend uh, we have uh, asked and because of uh, the availability so each of the subject is assigned three weekend right so so for this subject as well this weekend next weekend and i think in week 10 three weekend and it is good because the third weekend uh, a little bit gap uh, for that reason because in first two weekend uh, whatever we will discuss uh, then we can uh, in third weekend uh, you can also discuss your issues and rest of the topic and we can get our test right uh, uh, so similar to that uh, usually two tests or we can combine two tests into one comprehensive test right which is mm, two hour or two and a half hour so that towards the end of the semester this is one of the possibility and second thing uh, rather than we can go very long day every in two weekends which we were uh, uh, going on so it might uh, get you uh, much bored or uh, deviated so again in three weekend we can manage uh, maximum 230 or uh, three every day right so th that is four hour four and a half hour lecture on each day right so that or uh, that can uh, keep you uh, within the track and you will not be so same we will follow so maybe uh, we will not take the uh, uh, the long lunch break two third by two thirty or so right we can discuss today same tomorrow right and same next two weekend so that will be uh, manageable and uh, will keep you on track right so that will be our uh, planning of the course for this semester right so now coming back as i told you this is the overview of the uh, course i have given and it is as i told you it is a, a bit uh, different uh, than other courses it will give first some introduction of the uh, deep water activity or uh, offshore activities and uh, making concept so the objective of this course which i can summarize with my earlier so the we will start with the definition and concepts of offshore structure as i say difference between shallow water and deep water as briefly i have explained to you an overview of environmental loading because uh, whenever we are going to the offshore regime right so 
uh, whenever uh, we are on onshore as uh, last semester right i have uh, discussed in my part right uh, in appraisal so other than the live load and dead load and temperature load so uh, the the environmental kind of loadings are there which is uh, fire loading or the earthquake and wind loading blast right so that we have discussed uh, last semester right so these kind of loadings are always there in offshore as well but on top of that uh, uh, the most important loading which are always there are the met ocean conditions which are uh, loading from the uh, uh, because the floating or flowing water right so you will heard the new term waves although uh, we are not doing masters on offshore structures but we will simply uh, or just will have little bit understanding what does it mean by wave what are the kind of waves uh, wave and current these are some additional loading so uh, I we will discuss a little background of that right and uh, with that the, it will cause the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic pressure onto the structure and as i say we would also like to know uh, there are in deep water uh, much uh, advancements are coming and depending on to the type of seas if, again we will consider right the seas or ocean right you will go the south china sea and compare to the uh, north sea or the gulf of mexico where uh, uh, there are many offshore structures gulf of mexico which is uh, touching the south coast of uh, uh, usa which is texas louisiana most of the uh, oil and gas platform and mexico and the north sea which is uh, part touching most of the european countries uh, like norway uh, uk abad inside and so on and uh, uh, the uh, south china sea right where uh, indonesia malaysia brunei they are having so we can compare that uh, the south china sea is much friendlier sea right particularly that part which is covering the malaysia indonesia because this gulf kind of situation or covering from kalimantan on that side right and the uh, uh, peninsular malaysia so this is quite friendlier condition the sea is not as rough but we will consider the north sea and the uh, gulf of mexico throughout the year they are considered very rough seas right very rough conditions so again whenever we are and particularly we are going to deep water so the sea conditions also affects the design or selection right the basic concept of the structure as many name of structures are there right so again uh, qualitatively conceptually we will be discussing under which sea condition uh, <clears throat> which type of the structure will be better right because even in decision making or maintaining the structure so we should have to have some technical knowledge right so as i always say right in other like rela it does not mean we are involved in designing but we are involved in maintaining and maintenance of structures or any asset which is uh, throughout the lifetime and it incurred annual budget right so the know how is very important for the right particularly in the tough time tough economic period so sometimes we have to uh, put unnecessary money for uh, uh, for maintaining our assets right so that's why 
it will be in decision making because asset managers where managers are come so some kind of decisions we have to take and for that reason right so we have to have some kind of technical know how so in a way we will get that technical know how right really in this component we cannot say we are in the design right because we are managing so this is and lastly as i said we will get some challenges and uh, there are much many pipelines are there uh, as uh, uh, i will just touch into that and in the same semester uh, the two subjects are being offered reliability of pipelines right so because both subjects are mine so uh, this time uh, because uh, this subject is uh, given to dr william pau but i have shared all my lectures to him if some of you are taking so but uh, maybe last may some of you have taken this subject so you will be familiar so more detail on pipeline and riser you will go to the uh, parallel course going on this semester right but again uh, dr william pau is teaching first time uh, i have shared but anything you can also uh, want to discuss with me uh, also welcome to you so this is the objective of uh, this subject and objective means in the end you have the concept so uh, objective will become the learning outcome right <clears throat> so uh, the first part of chapter 1 so in this slides i have added two uh, you can say chapter or section so the chapter 1 is the overall introduction and an overview of offshore structures where we will uh, go through the activities in offshore region right particularly for oil and gas exploration and production right because whenever we are talking oil and gas activities so there are two terms used oil and gas exploration and production so explo so there are two different uh, discipline right there are also many sub discipline so exploration the first discipline in oil and gas is the exploration right <clears throat> so as in journal uh, if we will look our planet right so the geography of the planet right what we have seen uh, uh, date back so uh, as we know two third of the planet is covered by water and one third of the planet is the land and land is also scattered which is being divided into uh, island or continent the major division is based on continent and so on and they are divided by seas and oceans right because if you can see like even the malaysia east and west west malaysia right so demarcation or division is uh, in between there is south china sea right so which is dividing sabah sarawak with peninsular malaysia right so same <clears throat> so this uh, uh, as we know that the planet is serving the hidden treasures of the planet <clears throat> so where they, there are many treasures like oil gas minerals we are uh, exploring and uh, taking out from the land so much more uh, treasures are there which the god has given for us for the benefits of uh, human being and if we can see the major purpose of the uh, oceans and seas for us first of all uh, transportation right as we know that the export and export right now we are 
living in a global world right so the transportation the bulk transfer of money uh, 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 the uh, goods right uh, which at the cheapest way right from one country to other like even oil and gas uh, right uh, export from oil producing countries to the non oil producing countries or like manufacturing goods so transportation is that is the ocean and seas are also providing uh, sea food for us as like in malaysia shrimps fish all these are the staple food right so uh, then is strategic purposes like defense purposes right so the seas and oceans are like americans are uh, the different part of the world and the atlantic and pacific oceans are separating america from um, uh, much part of the world north america right recreation uh, uh, hello anybody asking something hello 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 someone microphone on no hissing gun so uh, these are not our major interest over here is energy right so whenever energy so we are seeking energy which is oil and gas and uh, hydro energy right wind energy and uh, transportation of energy right as you have seen this left part right so that cover right that cover uh, the structures which you have seen over here and for these structures which we have to build for the exploration from the bottom of the sea and production of the energy sources and after producing these energy sources we have to take them to the uh, coast our uh, grounds right facilities like you have seen refineries along the coastline so we can transport them either through this big ships right uh, or nearby or intercontinental export or you have seen there are uh, these pipelines underwater pipelines right from these structures which is in offshore region right and you can also see at the bottom which is sea bottom there are also some storage uh, thing so <clears throat> whenever we are uh, talking about the offshore right development right so including deep water or shallow water so this is the highlighted one right for the seeking energy sources right and for seeking energy sources this is our scope right so the we have to build a structure and maintain a structure even infrastructure which is this pipeline or mobile infrastructures which is like ships or uh, the uh, container ships or so on for uh, near distance or uh, intercontinental movement of the energy resources so this is basically our scope of this subject and we would like to understand right what are the basic requirement why uh, and uh, which type of structure or at which stage the, as you can see this is like a full fledged right uh, this is structure where i am highlighting it is a full fledged complex right industrial complex or industrial building right so whether at which stage we have to take decision right uh, and there are also small right what what is the difference between exploration and production so that 
it will cover our scope of uh, this subject is this highlighted right portion we are not for that right so uh, as why uh, we first of all uh, the justification <clears throat> why we are uh, going to do because whenever we are going to offshore and we are going further away and to deeper and deeper water depth so we are receiving more challenges more rugged conditions and uh, which is also more thrilling right and uh, higher risk than the justification right why so as we know that hydrocarbons is a nature gift and hidden treasure in the oceans and seas as well right as we say hydrocarbon are still although we are talking other sources of energy uh, and let's say last 20 years with the beginning of this millennium this centuries we are talking about the alternative sources of energy and last 10 years our efforts are uh, going much faster and uh, much tremendous towards other sources of energy and we are we are talking about clean energy so on and so forth but still if you can say that uh, our major chunk of energy is coming from hydrocarbon right so combining all other means of energy like uh, renewable energy nuclear energy uh, blah 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 right so uh, hydro therm hydro power therm so is still our dominant source of energy which is if i can say if not mistaken our 65 to 70 percent energy is coming from hydrocarbon right so this is these are still the dominant source of energy and i believe right by 2050 they will remain the dominant right if even our research will go very fast very successful on other so still uh, based on the reading based on literature based on prediction by the expert so i believe uh, still by 2050 40 to 50 percent right if all other sources will go very successful so still 40 to 50 percent contribution of energy requirement will be coming through hydrocarbon so as i say next 25 to 30 years still we need people uh, we need uh, engineers or asset managers for maintaining such uh, is, is structures <coughs> and uh, now as of current uh, uh, the oil and gas since we started uh, it is like uh, about seven eight years or ten years ago this figure and now it would have been reached to 30 percent i will update uh, this uh, so around 30 percent now oil and gas productions are coming from offshore areas and again by 2030 or 2040 this contribution because onshore reserves are getting uh, expire right so uh, or getting short so maybe in 10 to 15 years so there will be 50 50 right because even on onshore uh, new areas are coming up so it is expecting that by 2035 2040 so the uh, offshore region will be contributing about 50 percent but many countries like in in south uh, in this uh, southeast asia <coughs> about 90 90 percent right oil and gas activities are there in offshore particularly malaysia 
almost 100% oil and gas activities are in offshore region and uh, offshore the oil and gas is one of the major economic source of malaysia right so malaysia is still needs right uh, that uh, advancement and growth in uh, oil and gas and since it is 100% in uh, offshore region so uh, it is or same for brunei and mostly for indonesia so these countries need more and more uh, uh, main power and expertise right because in future as malaysia or indonesia already started right exploring in deep water right so more and more expertise needed for this so uh, new reserve are being exploiting and that can increase the technology so uh, with this introduction so uh, i will say that uh, an overview of, of oil and gas basic right so if we will say there are uh, two things right uh, which we will be uh, which we are uh, uh, talking about exploration uh, and production right so i think i will uh, i supposed to add some blank slides or maybe with different color i will write over here so it can be any blank there okay Let me see. Yeah. This is highlighter. Basically, I'm um, just recently. Oh, it's a me. This pen. Oh, this because I'm trying to write down this pad it is on highlighter maybe yeah so there are uh change the color to two activities oh. exploration It is
Okay. Oh. I think it is, I will. It is better I should take the small board. Uh, give me a minute.
sorry, I was searching uh, this board, right? So can you see that, right? Because I thought that uh, uh, the pad, I have to practice on this electronic pad, so it is better I should. OK, so as we are talking, an overview right, of oil and uh, gas activities. Right. So whenever we are talking two things, right, exploration and production. Right. So whenever we are talking exploration, so uh, for even oil and gas, so exploration means first of all, it is start with search, right? Uh, for ONG sources, right? So this is the search. After search, uh, which means it is discover, right? The and after uh, discovery, right? We can assessment of reserve. Which means you have to estimate the and feasibility. Right? Then, if feasible, then we will go for engineering. Right? The, where it will come? Yes. Right? So, I will explain this part. Right, when it, which is being given. So first of all, uh, we have to go exploration. Exploration, uh, as I said, it start with the discovery, search for oil and gas. Right. So, which is normally whether onshore and offshore. Right. So every country would like to know what is there, what which kind of hidden treasures are there, right? Like um, in Malaysia, and uh, it is being confirmed with the survey of Malaysia, which uh, GNG department and other, right? So, and the geological features of Malaysia, because with the fundamental concept, so it is uh, uh, making an understanding under this kind of geology, this kind of uh, minerals or the uh, treasures are there, right? So uh, just like as the earlier studies or the uh, survey of the uh, Malaysian or South China Sea shows that because at the west coast side, the Strait of Malacca, right? And at the east coast side is the uh, South China Sea. So the basic studies and uh, geography of the uh, uh, South China Sea has shown or proof that uh, there are uh, oil and gas reserves. So whenever we are talking, this is very large area, right? Maybe uh, if uh, this part, which is more than 100,000 square kilometer of uh, 1 million square kilometer area, which is being bound by several countries. So uh, time to time, each country has to divide, right? The area, if I can, so you can see here. So let's say uh, this is the plan of, uh, Peninsular Malaysia and uh, this is South China Sea part. So there will be some uh, 
blocking demarcation right so let's say this is 100 or 50 kilometer by 50 kilometer it uh, block right because the uh, environment or mineral department under ministry of government they control right because all these so for example if this is 50 by 50 square kilometer you can say any block you can name like in malaysia those are in patronas angsi dulong uh, these are the name of the block right just now ipo para trono so in thing in offshore so we can uh, do the the first thing is offshore topographical distribution right this is being done and after this topographical distribution so it is being discussed like if i can say this block we can say uh, amm asset management and maintenance block right this is uh, 50 by 50 2500 right square kilometer area which is being given and uh, this block is need to be explored right first of all uh, every block does not mean that uh, there will be uh, some economic activities right so the first thing uh, that uh, the governments right under dedicated ministries like in america which is ministry of mineral resources right in malaysia i think uh, uh, natural resources ministry uh, they they own right directly because uh, all these uh, minerals are the nation property the, the the owners of all these are the nation right the patronas is the custodian on behalf of the nation meaning to say uh, that that uh, whichever oil and gas reserves are there it belongs to the malaysian government on behalf of the malaysian people right so patronas is being the custodian on behalf of the people of malaysia so meaning to say uh, the first thing that uh, maybe there will be 100 over blocks in south china sea right so uh, in last 40 50 years since when patronas and other oil and gas companies are working in malaysia right so maybe uh, 30 percent blocks have been explored or 40 percent blocks have been explored right so wherever the oil and gas uh, tapping activities going on there are also uh, continuous simultaneously activities are going on uh, the blocks or sub blocks to find the uh, resources right the seeking discovery right so whenever we are talking discovery right we are going as i have uh, given the example of this 50 meter by 50 meter amm block so uh, we have to perform different kind of activities right the first of all we would like to know if it is offshore right so we would like to know the characteristics of the uh, um, uh, ocean mat ocean data right we have to know the uh, or we have to do the study of the geology of the seabed right and we have to go uh, deeper and to look right uh, we have to go for the exploratory well right we have to dig exploratory well right so meaning to say we have to go deeper right uh, as uh, uh, first of all uh, if i can uh, rub here So this is the cross section. This is the sea bottom, right? This is the sea level. 
So we would like to know uh, this uh, melt ocean. What is this water condition, flowing water condition, environment, uh, air, and we need this geology. And we would like to know because oil will be lying somewhere, right? So we have to go so that for that purpose we have to drill the hole which is the well and the purpose of this well is the drilling well right we and this drilling well or ex, this there are also other this is exploratory well or study well right because we don't know we are digging the well we would like to know one kilometer or two kilometer or five kilometer deep what is there, right? We have to study. We do the research. So this is for seeking the discovery, right? The, right? So uh, that is the most important thing. Sometimes we have to excavate 10 such well and out of 10 well, maybe uh, the success rate is two wells or one wells are given an indication. So with that, uh, we can say on to the spatial uh, distribution, right? As uh, like uh, uh, if in this cross section, so we can say this is the area, right? Or uh, where there are the traces of oil and gas, right? Traces of oil and gas. So the, we, then we would like to see that is called the reservoir. So we would like to estimate what is the extent, which means what is the size of the reservoir, right? Let's say it is uh, elongated, long, like this, duster shape. So this is the plan, which is maybe 10 uh, or 5 kilometer wide. 20 kilometer long, one continuous and uh, at different pocket. So the traces of oil. And then we, we would like to also know what is the thickness of this reservoir, right? So, and what is the uh, geological characteristics of this reservoir, right? Because oil and gas uh, are not, particularly oil is not there. There will be one big drum or one big tank, there are in between the soil, right? So in the pores, porosity, like one mm or less than one, right? You can say uh, this is like a sponge, right? You can take the sponge, right? Dry sponge, you put into the water. So what it will suck the water. So where this water lives, the water lives in the empty pores inside the sponge. So same thing, oil is there, right? The, the, uh, the uh, ground uh, underneath is like a sponge, right? If we can simulate and in that sponge, oil is being stored. So it depends. Uh, then the major challenge is to suck, to, to lift the oil, right? So we can and again it depends the lifting so again uh, you if you can say you it is all the fluid mechanics right in in fluid mechanics those from uh, uh, mechanical or chemical you have gone through so head right pressure head so the uh, because the uh, oil need to be pumped against the gravity right so you have to induce some pressure and it is depending right in the pores where it is lying in this pore. If it is very complicated pore, so it will be difficult, right? So that's why if uh, we will estimate there are uh, 1 trillion barrel of oil, right? But in um, throughout the life, uh, we cannot suck 100% oil, right? Uh, based on the technology, if you will go in 1950s and 60s, right, from every reservoir, we can suck 20% of the oil. 80% oil was remained there, right? Because now uh, the, the uh, 
uh, with the advancement which is enhanced oil recovery if you can heard this right enhanced oil uh, recovery or extended oil recovery with the advancement in uh, uh, the pumping technologies and how to mobilize the oil into the complicated region so now i think 35 40% or maximum 40% oil can be suck right from the reservoir right so this uh, what i'm saying that the first part in the exploration right in exploration the first thing we are looking right uh, in uh, 50 meter a kilometer by 50 kilometer which are the main pockets right the actual location of the pocket uh, first of all whether there is oil and gas so we say uh, as i said uh, if this whole right whiteboard on my hand is uh, the block area right you consider this is the whole block area so uh, with our study right we say this is one this is two this is the three spot right these are the three spot where the uh, the exploratory well study uh, and all other uh, drilling studies uh, shows that uh, there is oil right so this is the initial discovery and after this initial discovery then uh, we have to know more right because then we will go for the feasibility right what is the technology needed right we have to estimate this the size of this reservoir right uh, let's say uh, with this test and model right so there are techniques like I will show seismology is one of the technique which we will do initially. Then we will go for the drilling well, right? So we will have to make an estimate, right? Estimate again, there are models and models are being also be improving that we can make an estimate. There will be this much. Uh, barrel of oil right and this uh, based on the most advanced available technology this much oil can be pumped every day right so uh, and that would be the uh, cost of pumping and maintaining this right so whenever we are doing this feasibility and we will be and then we will go for the oil economics right because every discovery is not feasible oil economics which means that we will look modeling for next 10 or 20 years and we can see the uh, the expected uh, variation in the uh, oil prices in international market and as you know that uh, oil economy is pretty much depending on to the uh, world conditions right uh, the world peace condition so world prosperous condition right war like condition or uh, the conditions like pandemic and other conditions so the oil prices jitter a lot right so uh, again the economic economic expert they play an important role those are experts in dealing with the oil economics right it is a trade oil economy so they can say that uh, the, the with uh, if this is uh, the oil reserves are there and this much oil can be pumped based on the technology and th those will be expenses right uh, this and those will that would be the expected income based on per various scenarios right so uh, they do the oil economic scenario analysis 
for 10 years or five years and based on scenario analysis under the worst scenario so oil companies say if the there will be 10 to 15 percent profit in uh, tapping the oil then you we can the decision makers decide yes we can go otherwise uh, we don't want to tap the oil right because uh, you will be oil company will be in losses right so uh, this what I have written here oil reserves are the quantities of crude oil estimated to be commercially recoverable by application of development project to known accumulation from a given date forward under defined conditions right so uh, this is the uh, first thing right uh, uh, please, uh, the one, uh, yeah, better. So as uh, this, the first uh, uh, bloat line, that is through our studies, right? As I told you, we have done the several testing, which uh, I will discuss a little that later. Then, uh, as I said, uh, after the second blood, the total estimated amount of oil in a reservoir including both producible and non-producible is called in place right so however because of reservoir characteristics and limitation in petroleum extraction technology only a fraction of this oil can be brought to the surface as i told you 50 years ago uh, we can tap only 20 percent now uh, maximum 50 percent and it is only this producible fra fraction that is considered to be reserved right what we cannot pump we cannot consider as reserve so what we are calling reserve reserve means what we can pump right because what we cannot pump it is not for uh, not creating any economic value right so the economic value or which is the reserve which can be pumpable oil. So the ratio of producible oil reserve to total oil in place for a given field is often referred to as the recovery factor, right? As say 20% or 30%, right? Which vary greatly among oil fields. So it is not that uh, everywhere you can get the same recovery factor. So the recovery factor of any particular field, right, may change over time based on operating history and response uh, to change in technology. And in the beginning, uh, again, you are estimating you can recover 25%, but after 20 years, right, so you can know much better on your reservoir so your recovery factors can be changed. It can be increased with new technologies and with new knowledge, right? So, so in the beginning, you say that uh, in next 20 years, you can tap, uh, for example, 500 million barrel of oil, right? And you make your feasibility, but after 15 years, with new technologies, right? Like Petronas, uh, for example, always investing money in research and technology development, right? Like membrane technologies, catalysts. So maybe uh, with the research and R&D work, right? In 15 years, so the uh, some oil companies, they invested uh, 500 million dollar and they say okay instead of 500 million barrel now they can estimate another 200 million barrel of oil can be recovered right so that is the impact of a continuous R&D expenditure right on to that so recovery factor can be increased so this is just uh, uh, whenever this is the oil well, right? So this is one of the 
typical right also i am also not petroleum engineer but little know how so this is one of the vertical crane uh, which is being used for this uh, drilling activities right as we say we have to make the hole this is a drilling bit so this is the uh, platform this is uh, regarding this may be onshore or offshore it is a journal right so this is uh, the set typical well drilling set right because a pressure this may be 100 meter or 20 meter this steel support structure when at which uh, this uh, drilling bit right this drilling bit is being attached that will make the hole and uh, there will be because while you are doing right making hole so there will be some uh, heavy pressure will be developing over here right so these are the some features right so this pressure can also be blasted right you are puncturing particularly gas pocket right so the sudden gas release right in the hole that can generate heavy upward or negative pressure so that can cause the blowout right that can be blown right so again uh, this is a uh, safety things right so this safety because any leakage so that will be so this is one of the most important uh, feature blowout prevention over there right we need some uh, these mechanical devices right and mud control right mud and casing because we have uh, uh, oil uh, drilling mud right we have to put inside for compensating because you are being making a hole which is uh, uh, deeper right so you have to maintain the stability right and uh, there will be um, so these are some basic features right of the structure so again right although uh, because there will be multiple discipline right not only there will be like uh, drilling expert right there will be geologist right they will be studying there will be mechanical engineers right those will be looking after maintaining this right the whole structure maybe a little bit uh, civil side as well there will be chemical engineers right looking at uh, what product is coming right chemical related thing there will be power because for all those things you need electrical power right so there will be combination of multiple discipline right for uh, this or whenever we are uh, developing an oil rig right so uh, this is just a basic which uh, uh, i uh, i have told here uh, which is uh, just uh, to have the know how right so drilling is uh, one of the uh, common terminology in oil and gas whether we are doing we are producing oil or we are exploring right so we have to do this activity what i have shown you this drilling right so once uh, we our initial studies using the seismic survey the first is some non destructive seismic survey right so we send some waves which uh, the waves uh, this is the wave propagation in solid media so the waves will go uh, i think some of the slide will show right so after the seismic survey uh, the indicators come that there is oil so the next stage uh, which is destructive testing which is drilling so uh, uh, with the seismic signal we have to choose the location where we will go for this ex exploratory drilling right so we will do the more study 
where we will collect the sample and we can study the characteristics of the reservoir. We will have to do the study for the estimation of the oil, type of oil, quality of oil or gas and whatsoever, right? So as I say, there are different purposes of drilling, right? And for all purposes of drilling, these are the multiple uh, discipline to be needed. So there are some uh, uh, equipment or terminologies used as uh, for uh, previous slide. So there is a drilling bit, which is a rotating equipment, right? Because that will churn onto the sea bottom or the uh, ground bottom that will make the hole. So that is the rotating equipment used for rotary drilling, right? Uh, the bit and that is the, which is churning onto the ground and making, removing the soil and making the hole. Survival is a large handle that holds the weight of the drill string, allows the string to rotate and make a pressure tight seal onto the hole, right? So this is survival will be attached right at the bottom is the drilling bit right which uh, which is like which will come here this is like the drilling bit at the bottom and this is the hole right so uh, this is the uh, drilling or rotating equipment so drilling string consists of drill pipe connected sections of about 30 feet and drill collar large diameter heavier pipe that fits around the drill pipe and place weight on the drill bit. Turnable or rotary table uh, drive the rotating motion using power from electrical. So they can uh, cause the turning effects, right? So these are all mechanical power. So this is the drill collar, drill bit, right? So that is being churning, right? and this pressure is coming. So churning and that uh, the uh, this pressure, so that the soil or loose soil will tend to even come up, right? Because whenever you are churning some, so pressure and something coming up. So drill bit, which is this casing, right? Because there will be everything in a casing, otherwise it will be collapsed, right? So this drill bit inside a casing, large diameter concrete pipe or or steel pipe, uh, because sometimes you will do the uh, the cementing, right? That lines the drill hole, prevent the hole from collapsing and allow drilling mud to circulate, right? This is the drilling mud, right? For circulating. So drilling mud used to stabilize the excess pressure created due to fluid in the formation used to cool drill bit, remove rock chips, right? So that some we have to make man-made drilling mud. We have to add inside. Derrick, uh, the structure, blowout preventer, high pressure wall located under the uh, land rig or on the seafloor that seal the high pressure drill lines and relieve pressure when necessary to prevent. If you can recall in 2010-11, right in the Gulf of Mexico, millions of barrel oil in deep water was leaked, right? And that was the failure of the blowout preventer, right, into the deep water, right? So uncontrolled gush of a gas or oil to the surface often associated with fire. So because that is HSC, right? Uh, that is safety requirement, right? It can cause a major accident if we will not control, right? So these are some uh, terminologies which wherever necessary I have explained, right? Uh, for, for just making. 
those are related to oil and gas uh, your experience you might know much better than me but these are some basic for understanding what we have to do right So these are some uh, top 20 nations by oil reserve percentage of the uh, global, right? Uh, I think it is continuously changing. Now I think USA, uh, which was here, but after shale oil, right? We have, uh, I have to update. So uh, these are the top 20 nations in which Saudi Arabia, now Russia, and U.S. also come, and I think now U.S.A. is uh, has toppled Saudi Arabia as number one, but still the uh, rank has changed. But these are the top twenty nations which are having the major oil chunk of the global reserve. Right? Uh, we uh, in Southeast Asia only indonesia is there right uh, because we are even in malaysia 400000 to 500000 barrel of oil we are producing and compared to them they are 30 40 million barrel of oil per day right and this is the map of the world oil map right of uh, this is statistics right so we are as you can say onshore and offshore and this is the area which is uh, the south china sea area which is uh, uh, which belong to indonesia and malaysia so this is a malaysian oil reserve right you can see the map and this is the indonesian side mostly at this part right in the south china sea uh, shared by uh, malaysia indonesia and brunei and uh, this is the map of the offshore region and offshore region as uh, uh, there are uh, different kind of structures uh, which are being there in offshore region which are being distributed and again uh, this is the southeast asia region where with this topography and number of deep water right this structure i think it is two or three years old statistics because these statistics not update it every year or uh, i have to search as well right so uh, so maybe uh, uh, this year i will again search and try to update the statistics right but last i think 2018 uh, i have updated these lectures right some of the slide i try to do every semester but anyhow uh, this is the presence of deep water in uh, southeast asia right so these are the number of structures and this is like as i have told you this is the hydrocarbon reserve and what is their typical cross section right the source right uh, rock shell or coal so this is the uh, reservoir which is mostly sandstone or carbonate right so the, where the oil deposits are there as i say uh, this is where the hydrocarbon it is like sponge like right so uh, this is the and uh, again this is the cap rock and the gas are usually lying above the oil right So, uh, with this introduction, the first thing, right, because uh, particularly uh, first thing for the exploration, right, so uh, because we do not 
go immediately for drilling the well, right? So the first thing is uh, using some non-destructive method, right? So a non-destructive method, which is searching for oil over water using seismology. Seismology, these are the device, the rays, right? So basically the rays, why it is called seismology, the vibratory rays, the rays or uh, the waves which will travel, right? So because now uh, if you can recall your physics, right? These waves are traveling within the different medias. You can see, right? This is, for example, the sea bottom, right? So the wave from here in the water, so this is the characteristics of the wave. From here, they are going, right? Deeper and deeper, and they are returning, right? So, uh, so, the, so that initial survey ship, so we need a survey ship. As I say, uh, you are doing this survey for uh, 50 kilometer by 50 kilometer area, right? And you would like to do the overall mapping, right? 2,500 square kilometer. So this ship, which will be slow moving ship onto that, which will tend to cover, right? It will be, so it will normally, this ship can be running in a grid line manner, right? 100 meter by, by 100 meter grid, right? Like uh, this over the reservoir, right? And again, the geoscientists normally do this. So if you can say uh, you every you can it will travel like this and or like this, right? So maybe in few weeks time, three weeks time, four weeks time, depending on to the size. So it will be traveling here to here, right? So whenever it is traveling, right? So these waves will be passing, right? So uh, this wave will be sending. So with different depth, which is coming and this is the receivers, right? When it is, so hydrophone, there are up to 3000 hydrophones on 3000, uh, on a 3,000 meter cable, right? So this is like, uh, this is the cable ship. So uh, that uh, hydrophone, which is a receiver, the technology, there are various technology. So air gun is the source of shock waves, right? So that's, that's why it is seismic shock. They stimulate, right? Compress air is more environmentally friendly than explosive. So uh, just if you would like to uh, study more, so more details, right? I'm also not expert of that, right? There are uh, specialist people, but the fundamental physics is that, right? So when, uh, if you can in physics, right? So reflection and energy and refraction energy, right? So reflective energy, the way is traveling back, right? So from different point, so that will be an indication, right? So this uh, recording with that we can make, right? Whether, because there will be calibration, whether there is oil, whether there is gas. So this is like, the cross section and uh, the seismic map. After this survey, you can prepare a seismic map as I have shown you. So with that, you can say this is the length of reservoir, right? If So this is the length of reservoir and this is the width of this reservoir, right? If I can say it is like this, right? So you can say it is, for example, 50, 20 kilometer long, this is 10, right? And in the cross section, 
this is the cross section so this is the plan and this is the cross section right this is the so you can trace these are the two locations right uh, this is at uh, this depth and a uh, different depth so this is the second reservoir right second reserve of oil right so uh, this after that uh, we can have because there are also the models based on this seismic data right in utp uh, because millions of data and uh, with the because for several years we are doing so now we have matured because once using seismic data uh, now we can say okay we initially we estimate this much oil and now our model have been improved so based on that we can make an initial estimate right we can make an initial estimate as i say after that when we can further go then we can go for the drilling well right we are uh, one here right we can say at this location this location this location we can go we can go for the more detail right statistics and more detail study where we can collect the sample of the soil uh, for further analysis right for uh, for uh, validating the model based on the seismic data right so this is a seismic survey the first survey right then uh, we have to drill the hole right this is the one which is again depending on to the type of this so uh, we need right once we are drilling the hole uh, and uh, because for the economic analysis for the feasibility so we need a temporary structure right because in the end with the study the data after this data collection we decide not to uh, pump oil or gas right because it is not feasible so we need uh, this is like you have seen the drilling uh, bit right the in the earlier slide i have shown you so you need this structure right because oil and gas so a small platform and this activities will go there for one month two month three months so you need people to be there right so you need some infrastructure for controlling and collecting data right so this is the drilling well drilling for exploration purpose right so after this we can proof the reserve proof reserves are those quantities of petroleum that by analysis of geological and engineering data right which you from here you have collected the data seismic model and geological data from the drilling well right can be estimated with reasonable certainty to be commercially recoverable right because uh, we are not exactly we are making the model statistics and a lot of because here we are talking the data analysis we are collecting data right uh, these sources of data uh, this source and this source of data right so with this analysis we are making an estimate right so which may be uh, right uh, so our model should be if it is 80% accurate model so it is considered successful model right uh, previously even model uh, work 60% it was considered successful right because uh, you cannot see by naked eye right so you have to 
so as we say commercially recoverable which means that in 20 years time and which is being compatible with the variation of oil economics oil pricing from a given date uh, forward from known reservoirs and under current economic conditions operating method and government regulation right so all sometimes you have seen right last year if you can recall early 2020 russia and saudi arabia right tussle in the controlling of oil pricing so because saudi arabia uh, just in tussle with russia right increase the oil production and in the market the oil was more and the user and the pandemic came so oil consumption was re reduced so uh, and because there was no not much storage for oil right so even the oil price came into negative you have seen right for a short while oil price came into negative meaning to say or those have pumped the oil they can say okay we will give you the oil as well as money right so these are the parameters right as we have seen the oil prices went down to 10 or 12 dollar a barrel right and which many oil companies uh, severely affected so these are the as i said uh, engineering and geological data using that engineering estimation then the decision making come from here economic prediction right the finance and economic people they have to do right oil is a, a parallel economy of the world right which uh, there are various pillars geopolitics is one of the pillar of the oil economics right so if deterministic method are used the term reasonable certainty is intended to express a high degree of confidence that the quantities will be recovered if the probabilistic so two types of methods are used there should be at least a 90 percent probability that the quantities accurate actually recovered will be equal or exceed the estimate right so there are two types of model deterministic model or probabilistic model usually probabilistic models are being used because deterministic meaning to say your uh, data should give the empirical relationship which should be very accurate right and unproved uh, reserves uh, are based on geologic or engineering data similar to that used in estimates of proof reserve but technical contractual economic or regulatory uncertainties preclude such reserve being classified as proof right so unproved reserve may be further classified as possible reserve and possible in future they can reserve may be estimated assuming future economic condition at present conditions it is not feasible but in in 20 years later that may become because uh, it does not mean what is unproof reserve today so in 10 years time and 20 years time so that may become your economic strength right So as I say, the drilling, right? So the largest and most critical investment for any oil company is that of drilling and intervening in wells, right? So the much money is being, right? This is the destructive. The, the creation and life of well can be divided into five stages, planning, drilling, completion, production, and lastly, abundment. As I say, because... Uh, it, this if you will keep it open uh, there will be a lot of emissions coming out which will cause the uh, pollution to the marine life right so uh, whenever drilling uh, the drilling 
engineering or the drilling activities into five planning in planning which is uh, all data analysis what we have discussed previously then drilling itself right the method of drilling as you can see the size is being increasing this is the uh, uh, casing right so multiple casing are there right and the drilling bit so this is the drilling the completion uh, once it is complete and you will put the structure at the top right so uh, and uh, once uh, it is the confirm and you are doing producing oil and gas so you need the structure production drill which means that 20 or 30 years you will be doing and once it will reach it will be exhausted you have to abandon so these are the five things five operations right so casing and so this is a uh, steel casing right which is and uh, to intact with this formation right this uh, bluish color is the formation ground so this is the hole so the hole is being separated with the formation by this cementing right the casing and cementing so this is the black line is the steel casing and uh, there are the cement right like so we have to use a huge amount of cement which will keep intact right so no discharge no leak over here right and this in this uh, casing we can do the drilling job so as we will move for uh, down to drilling so we have to add the next piece of casing as you can see so this is the way by which we can do the drilling operation until completion of the well right so which is one, one half to one meter in diameter right uh, the casing right uh, normally depending on to the type it is not very wide and the uh, drilling bit which is this which is 15 to 30 centimeter in diameter right as i say i'm also not expert right i'm not a drilling expert i'm civil engineer structural engineer right but now you have to be uh, like uh, asset manager particularly you have to have a although you will be a, a master of one but you must be jack of all right now uh, the old axioms are being changed last time they say jack of all master of none you can be master of one with jack of all in engineering right so as i say uh, I have been touch everything, so I can be jack of all, but I'm not the master of all. I've, um, master, I might be master of one or two. Same thing to you. So there are uh, well types. As I said, wildcat wells, when well is drilled based on large element of hope, right? After seismic survey, as I have said, told you, and uh, then seismic survey shows this is the reservoir position and the base on your seismic model you can say this is the area where so you anticipate you drill well over here so this is when a well is drilled based on large element of hope in a frontier area where very little is known about the subsurface so so that it is called the wild cat well. So in many areas, all exploration, oil exploration has reached a very mature phase and the chances of finding oil simply by drilling at random are very low. Therefore, a lot more effort is exploration and appraisal well, right? Appraisal, so we have to, do this with large hope right so exploration well when they are drilled 
purely for exploratory information gathering right so wildcat we with hope with data this is the location but exploration we are, we are uh, blind right when they are drilled purely for exploratory information gathering purpose in a new area appraisal well when they are used to assess so now uh, in this you have confirmed right so now you you, you have to make estimation so appraise when they are used to assess characteristic flow rate right how much oil you can pump of a proven hydrocarbon reservoir right a pro result and a four type of well is production which is there which is giving you oil production right when they are drilled primarily for producing oil or gas once the producing structure and characteristics are established right so when the on the platform you have um, uh, develop the infrastructure right so now your uh, production start right so that is your money right this first three wealth are your investment right investment it can go down but this is your money so before i will move this is just an overview i have given to you before I will move forward. Any question? Is it okay? Everything going fine? So, uh, if it is so, can we take uh, some five minutes uh, the break? Uh, I think uh, we can take one break now, and then when one ten fifteen break, we can take about one forty five, right? And by 2.30 or 2.45, we can wrap up today. Will it be okay? Okay. So we can. Okay. So before we go, any question? Everything okay? Okay, so just uh, uh, it is by 12.10, we can resume, right? Okay, we can resume. Now the uh, in the second part of uh, this lecture, so in the first part, we have make our concept what are the activities right now, which uh, i have given you the uh, activities for the exploration right and uh, a little bit on production that we will discuss so once uh, as we say uh, we will go for the a permanent structure or temporary structure for drilling well right so because we have to do these activities we have to uh, build certain structures right and uh, it is underwater so or in the offshore region so in the second part we will go an overview of the structures what is their or uh, no, uh, what is their chronology, configuration, what is nomenclature of structure, and what are the requirements, right? So in general, we will take an overview first, right? So offshore structures are large platform plates because mm, the structures are needed, we need the platform we need some area right for example on the ground right uh, so for uh, doing like you need a piece of land 
right for your plant or refinery right like for example hmm. oh right like for example uh, you are setting up refinery or, or even the offshore so you need a land right platform right where you can say this will be the storage tank there will be compressor area there will be control room right so you need an area so in offshore region uh, there is water right for example in this there is uh, this water right and you need one structure so you need one platform right which means a uh, hundred meter by hundred meter 200 meter by one area surface right onto that surface you can see you need this is the drilling zone you put the drilling thing the derrick or something uh, this is the pumping area this is the uh, electrical thing and because it is offshore people have to this is living quarter right this is control room so on so forth so you need a area and this area is a platform and this platform need to be supported by the ground so this is platform and this is the support when we are talking offshore structure uh, including foundation right so we are talking these three things platform is at which we can make our building right we can make our we can house our activity and platform which is over the water surface so it should be supported by some structure right so that is make which is make rigid or which is make is floating right this platform will be floating or it is rigid which means depending on to this support this support will be rigid or this support will be flexible right like the mooring line and the foundation where it is to be connected with sea bottom so whenever we are talking about offshore structure which we mean that thing right so after structure are large platform that primarily provide the necessary facilities and equipment for exploration and production of oil and natural gas in a marine environment during the initial prospecting phase uh, so again now these structures are needed for different phases right as if you will go to this slide yeah here we need right we need uh, this this may be exploratory well and we have not yet decided whether this location is correct or whether we can get oil based on our economics or not right so maybe i need uh, th at this location this structure right this structure i need for some temporary phase which is three months or four months by the time i will uh, do these activities and i will complete my study right so meaning to say uh, that we are doing this for a uh, temporarily thing so we need something either it is uh, uh, being relocated right so it can be some sort of thing because three in three months time if uh, we, we we decide that this is not the correct position so maybe five million or ten million dollar which we invested over here and the whole structure we have to dismantle and throw so that will be because for oil companies 
so that will be uh, uh, although 10 million is not but 100 of such you will throw so that will be impactful loss to the oil and company right so these kind of structure would be such that can be of multiple that can be multiple times to be relocated right so either it is ship based or they are uh, temporarily uh, placed onto this location so we can jack up temporarily right temporarily we can jack up over there and in three months time four month times we can be, uh, relocate over here or over here right so during the initial prospecting phase jack up or alternatively floating rigs are used to drill exploration wealth right as i say either ship based floating right or jack up right so we can do jack up after we finish the work we can take out to other location so that can be of multiple usage kind of this and if the drilling operation proves successful a permanent platform where we can do the real investment which is which will be like a building for 30 years or 40 years time period just now like petronas twin tower a permanent structure right so then we will go to a permanent so we will uh, from here we can say there are two categories of the offshore structure one is for short term or temporary structure and the other for long term so uh, which is uh, for the uh, production purposes drilling and production and short term is for drilling purpose only and that is for mostly exploration purpose right so initially the exploration well is drilled to determine whether any oil or gas is present within a given area once the decision to initiate an oil production has been taken a production facilities uh, usually come into place at the site so this platform may consist of one or several platform so there is not necessary one large platform we can have uh, right the cluster because multiple close by with a large area right this permanent structure if onto the plan right so you can have uh, one production platform close to this one drilling and one export platform right so you can separate right B depending so you can have a complex of platform right depending on to the size you can have a complex of platform depending on to the site location and water depth the production facilities are either floating platform or platform placed directly onto the seabed right either as i said the floating which means uh, this is the platform and this is uh, just like by wire or cable right so they can be float or uh, these platform are uh, like the uh, rigid support just now i told you so they can just deflect few but they cannot be float they will be rigid right so there will be two type so they can be rigid or they can be floatable ja so in general oil platform are located in shallow water shallow water means 50 meter 100 meter on the uh, shelf or the uh, which is close by right 
like 30 40 kilometer so if you will look right uh, the the uh, uh, seabed condition right sea bottom so if let's say uh, in general right you are going to that it is the coastal area so it is going there so this is like the water depth is changing right so uh, let's say until here so now we are going to the deeper and deeper this is the there may be some abrupt change in the depth right so this is where it is uh, within your uh, this uh, continental shelf right the piece of that so this is like from 10 meter to 100 meter water depth so this is like the shallow zone right this is like a shallow zone right and mostly in shallow zone we will have the uh, fixed bottom a rigid structure However, as the demand for oil and gas increases and reserves are found in increasingly deeper water facilities and equipment must be located either directly on the bottom of the sea, which is, or because uh, the, as I said, there are two uh, phenomena, either we will, uh, rather than we have any structure, we have subsea. So the, all the uh, drilling and a production activity at the sea bottom or we can use floating structure a typical wellhead wellhead platform in the north sea wellhead which means the uh, just now i have uh, shown you the uh, at the uh, ground level right where the this is the sea bottom or i can use other color so this is the uh, well you drill and this is the top of well at which you will put permanent structure for the uh, drilling right so this is called the well head the top and over there you will uh, put the valve and all these for sucking of this so this is called the christmas tree or the tree or christmas tree right uh, the hole over here at the top of the well right so uh, a, tip, a typical well held platform in north sea is equipped with 12 to 24 well head right uh, because the 20 to 20, 12 to 24 well and in few cases up to 30 40 well heads which means on the cluster you can see uh, if uh, over there so one well two well at this location three so you can say six by six 12 well right like this in any configuration so like 12 in two rows three rows four rows or 24 you can go right this is in the north sea so they go in close by so uh, this is the well again depending on to the platform so directional drilling allow uh, the reservoir to be uh, access at different depth and a uh, remote possibility position of up to five to eight uh, kilometer from the right so directional drilling which means because last time we were only doing the horizontal right uh, sorry vertical well drilling but if this is you are have this is your platform right so you are drill your well can go 
like this right it is not that directly over there so this is the directional drill drilling so that can go five to eight kilometers away from the platform right so uh, and even further right uh, now horizontal drilling right so in general offshore structure may be used for a variety of uh, reason oil and gas exploration right uh, from this this is like a platform right and this is by a bridge connecting to that right so this can be served oil and gas exploration right so you have developed this and you see there are a number of reservoir right so uh, it can be used for at one side production and on the other end for other area it can be used for oil and gas exploration accommodation people will be living there bridges and causeway right as multiple platform those can be connected by these bridges loading and offloading facilities from there there will be loading and offloading right for the tankers or pipeline so these are the some functions which are being placed uh, which are being controlled at the platform and this is a platform and this is a support this is a shallow water rigid type of platform so usually uh, uh, because uh, in offshore construction and easy 90% of these platform are steel structure right because reinforced concrete is not uh, uh, that uh, prevalent mode of material right uh, compared to offshore because of the uh, conditions and locations right and uh, transportation because uh, steel structures are lighter compared to concrete structure so in the steel platform category there are various type of structure depending on the use and depending on the water depth in which the development of offshore oil and gas field has i think this i have explained so this is like uh, as i said the type of offshore structure the production platform right Pro which are like permanent when uh, because the activities will be increase in production because this is like your factory right your product your business is going on right you are getting pumping oil and you are exporting so this slide is showing this is the uh, production plant right which is including helipad living quarter these are modules this is the drilling area cranes right so on uh, this is in close up and these are uh, because the these kind of platform can be supported on variety this is like here fixed bottom this is like a semi submersible this is a floating like this mooring line right this is like vertical mooring line tension leg platform this is like concrete this is like ship shape which we call fpso so these are some variety of production platform uh, depending on to the water depth they are being in operation in all over the world right so as i said offshore platforms are used for exploration and oil and gas uh, uh, from under seabed and processing the first offshore platform was installed in 1947 of the coast of so it is like 74 years old louisiana and it was in 6 meter water depth today there are over 7000 offshore platform around the world in water depth even more than this right
platform size uh, so again it is a design size so uh, just uh, uh, we can be discussed it is not platform size uh, depend on the facilities to be installed onto the top side right you are only doing for drilling like this is only the drilling platform so you need only the facilities for drilling not the pumping of oil right oil rig living quarter helipad these are the basic thing so living quarter uh, how many crew you are needed right depending to so 50 crew to 100 crew for example as water depth uh, in general there is no hard and fast rule but uh, us mineral management uh, department classifies water depth right up to this right 1300 feet or 350 meter or less as shallow water from 350 to 1500 meter water depth as a deep water and um, greater than 1500 meter is ultra deep water but there is not hard and fast right in petronas scenario uh, up to 200 meter because it is depending on to your uh, uh, experiences and the challenges you have faced right and as uh, these are the types of uh, offshore structures which are being placed right in close form with different name like the fixed platform in shallow it is showing the water depth is increasing right the fixed platform which is rigid structure right so it is like a steel support which is called jacket right and on this jacket like four legs or six legs or eight leg jacket right which is this at the top this platform right it is supporting the area right and in the middle this is like because derrick is there so this is the well head right the well casing is going right so this is like now it has limitation so the same the rigid structure but like uh, uh, the concept of tall buildings right uh, petronas twin tower so this uh, like the uh, coarser structure so which is the uh, close tower like structure like right? similar concept like the tall building and this is this whitish color so that is called the compliant tower so we can go as we say the the uh, shallow water is 200 300 so this will be 60 70 meter we are going to 200 meter water depth we or 250 meter so we can make uh, this steel tower right which is behave like a tube right so it is called the compliant tower which is same as fixed bottom and it is being supported now further so these two options might not be economical so there are some tension legs which means because the buoyancy right we will discuss uh, in detail later right but you can consider right so for example this is the object right in water right so there will be two things right this will be the downward force right which is weight of the structure plus whatever and water will push it up right there will be buoyancy so weight and buoyancy right so if a uh, buoyancy and and weight will be equal so that will be floating and this buoyancy uh, upward force will transfer onto this right so it will cause the tension in this wire right so this will called the 
tension leg platform TLP, right? So these are the tension leg, which means that tighten wire, right? So that uh, we can, we are using the effects of uh, physics, which is buoyancy of fluid mechanics, right? So we can induce tension due to buoyancy, and so we can make the uh, uh, a buoyancy and weight balance, right? So we can make this structure which is semi-rigid or semi-floating structure. Then this leg we can loosen, right? So that is purely floating structure, right? So it is called the semi-submersible floating structure. We have also deep, right? Like cylindrical, again, uh, so it is called spar-like structure. So we have these, and we have also the uh, station ship-like structure, which is called. But they are moved, permanently moved. They these are the FPSO, floating production, storage, and offloading activities on the ship structure. And as we have seen, we can have uh, the at the sea bottom, which is the subsea structure, right? Which can be tie back, right? Larger scattered area. So uh, as we say from the platform, we cannot control. So we can have the subsea facilities and that can be connected to one platform by that. So these are the, these are the uh, just a uh, summary of the scope of offshore structure. Right? So as from this whole summary, we can say uh, this is the uh, fixed structure that extend to seabed, right? So uh, these are some uh, uh, fixed platform, compliant tower, and to some extent tension leg platform, right? These are in both categories, right? Floating or or the uh, fix, and these are the uh, floating, right? So these are the categories for the floating structure that we will be discuss. So more uh, like the fixed platform, right? Which is like. Uh, this is the support, right, with closed loop. So it is four uh, vertical column or the slanting column. This is the 3D steel truss structure. So in oil and gas industry, it is called jacket supported platform. Right? The platform is a common term. The support is jacket, right? So this is a space frame or 3D frame, right? A structure with tubular member, right? Circular member supported on pile. These are, uh, they are bottom. So onto the ground, right? So this is the uh, ground, T bottom, and there will be, uh, A structure peg onto the ground called the pile, right? Which is so onto that uh, this uh, platform, right? So there will be at the bottom there will be this pile, so that will be the foundation of this structure. Use for moderate water depth can be up to 400 meter. Jacket provide protective layer around the pipes right so in between because it is also be the effects of water right it will so these pipeline which are the riser production riser right this uh, the the uh, radish are the well head right these well head right and this well head are being right or this is the uh, these are going and the pumping all the uh, operation are being there, right? 
Typical offshore structure will have a deck structure containing a main deck, a sailor deck, and a heli deck, right? So the deck structure is supported by deck leg connected to the top of the pile, which is this low water uh, through the seabed and into the soil. So this is the uh, more detail of the different parts is being there, right? The derrick or this is the drilling tower, right? Sometime built it if uh, uh, profitable. Otherwise, we can have separately, right? For temporary flare, uh, which is the excessive gas we have to burn for the... So this is the flare stake, top side, right? Processing pump. Right, which is being used for pumping oil, gas, other oil and gas processing on the land. Right, it is there. So this is jacket. So all nomenclature are being given over here. Right. So this is uh, uh, some, uh, as I said, uh, this is the pile. Right, uh, which is more given and piled are uh, sometimes concrete, sometimes steel. Right, they are locked at deep inside this. Right, so this is jacket and this is the under the ground. These are the pile. Right, group of pile each leg is supporting. Right, so underwater, the piles are contained inside the legs of a jacket structure which serve as bracing for the pile against lateral load, right? So because the flowing water, it can restrict the movement, right? The jacket also serve as a template for the initial uh, driving of the pile, right? Uh, natural period, because this is uh, the dynamically controlled, right? Because uh, they are not, uh, 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 show no motion, so there will be some vibration. So uh, whenever you are talking dynamic characteristics, so you need the, uh, the whenever the uh, motion related response. So we are talking frequency or time period. So uh, the when it will vibrate one cycle, it is called the period. So as a result, because of the flowing water effects, so the natural period of jacket structure is 2.5 seconds is to keep blow wave period, right? The wave which is B, right? The wave period, uh, meaning to say the wave which is traveling, a single wave. If a single wave means... Oh, uh, This is like a wave, right? So this is starting the wave phase, right? So this is the uh, wave uh, crest and trough, the highest, right, uh, magnitude or altitude at zero to maximum. This is the sinusinic wave. So uh, the time taken a particle to travel from here to here or single wave is called the wave period, right? One single wave. This is a single wave, right? So when this cycle take place, right? When a water particle move here, the maximum magnitude of this, right? And so this is one uh, cycle. And usually uh, the uh, it is 14 to 20 seconds, right? So uh, so because this is the one which will excite this platform. So if this platform vibrate, so either we have to keep the period of vibration of the platform either more than the uh, period of vibration of the wave or less than. Because if it will coincide, then it will resonate. Right? Because this is forcing wave. Wave is a forcing effect. 
wave will tend to force structure to move so the wave the velocity of wave at which so the wave is a 14 second right which means that the wave is moving slowly the structure can vibrate fast right in that so or structure can vibrate further slowly right but normally rigid structure right they can vibrate uh, faster right so that's why 2.5 second 2 second is the uh, natural period right so the uh, the structure can move to and fro right it can move it can vibrate faster right so this is the city so 95 percent of offshore platform around the world are jacket supported because it's still uh, our dominating oil is shallow water right uh, now we are moving uh, into deeper water So compliant tower is a part of that, but as you see in jacket, right? So that is a coarser structure, right? So again, the height limit, the, the jacket, this is also jacket, but when we are tying, right, horizontally, this leg, this leg, right? If we are tying by close, right? diagonal right so that is the uh, like a uh, tube shape right so if i can say here if uh, this uh, jacket leg if you can have Coarser spacing, large spacing, right? And if deeper height, let me draw first, right? So you can go close spacing. So which means by doing so, we can because deeper spacing so it can undergo to large deformation right so we can restrict so if you are going to deeper water right so this deformation will be large which may be to control the horizontal deformation so the diagonals we put at the close spacing so that will be uh, behaving like a tower right like a tall building right like a, a small building like Petronas Twin Tower, right? So it is like the concept is similar, right? We can have one compliant tower with the closely spaced. So we can, this horizontal and diagonal member, right? At close spacing, so that can control the horizontal movement, right? And that can give the advantage we can go uh, this fixed bottom or rigid platform for more deeper water right so narrow flexible frame structure supported by pile foundation right has no oil storage so we cannot have the oil storage in that we should have a different platform production is uh, through tension rigid riser right so inside uh, there will be these pipes right these pipes right as they are used they are sucking oil onto that so this is called the production riser the pipes right which are being right taking vertically taking up at the platform so i so you cannot store here so next to it, there will be oil tanker, right? A small oil tanker is always uh, anchored there. So uh, because every day you are uh, pumping 20,000 barrel, 10,000 barrel. So you have 1 million 
barrel capacity tanker right park here so within a week or three days so you can fill the tanker and tanker can take it or you can pump here from there you can transport oil uh, directly uh, to, through the pipeline or so on so forth right so pipeline so right from the sea bottom because pipeline at sea bottom and you are taking at the support top so this you are uh, offloading to the tanker right so these are called the riser So these are some uh, in Norway or some places in China, right? When very rough sea, so we have this concrete for concrete tower. At that, uh, we are, are having the platform, and uh, these are the storage tank at the sea bottom, right? Uh, like in US, so huge storage tank they have, right? So they uh, this is more expensive but uh, more advantages for uh, rough seas right because it is more rigid structure and for this foundations we can have for example 20 30 meter high this tank and maybe a 200 by 200 so you can have the huge storage capacity so uh, fixed bottom structure made from concrete heavy and remain in place on the seabed without the need for piles because directly used for moderate water depth up to 300 meter right otherwise uh, it, it, they will be cost ineffective right part construction in is made on the dry dock which means we can float them uh, rest we will do right adjacent to the sea the structure is built from bottom up uh, like onshore structure like a building we have to construct right at a certain point dock is flooded and the partially built structure so some we can uh, build for example lower part we can build uh, at the dry dock then we move it uh, and then we can uh, rest of the part we can build into the sea right so this is the floater uh, so floater are uh, because the narrow foundation as you have seen i told you these are the tension leg tension leg meaning to say due to buoyancy right this is the and this is this tension leg which is fixed or on template at the sea bottom right and this buoyance force right will cause tension in this wire right so we are utilizing this buoyance force so uh, the payload or the load onto this platform we can see that weight should not exceed at any point than the buoyancy because if weight will be more than buoyancy so this will be settled right it will be sink right so we are utilizing the uh, buoyancy to 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 stabilize to gain stability of the platform so tension leg platform are floating facilities that are tied down to the seabed by vertical steel tubes called the theater or the uh, tendon the characteristic makes the structure very rigid in the vertical direction right because they will not sag and we make sure that buoyancy should always be equal to or greater than the weight right so this characteristic made the structure very rigid in the vertical direction right not they can move horizontally but vertically they are rigid 
so the vertical rigidity helps to tie in wells for the production this is the well right we can bring at the top while the horizontal compliance make the platform insensitive to the primary effects of wave have large column and pontoon and fairly deep drop right so this is the platform which is because this tension leg are supporting this structure right so this is the uh, column and these columns may also be used for the storage or uh, they are being used for creating buoyancy they can be filled with the low density fluid that will induce the buoyancy so this is the column and uh, this is uh, the whole called pontoon the horizontal right this pontoon and column so this is the supporting of the deck this red this is the deck platform so this is the mid structure pontoon and column which are being rest supported by the tension leg and these red colors are the well riser right which is going to the platform okay so tlp is the short form of tension leg platform as it is giving this is the column and on to that has uh, excess buoyancy which keep as i told you the so buoyancy is the main thing so top side facilities number of risers right which is the vertical pipe right the riser these are the production risers right which is coming from the well head to 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 the top right top side facility number of riser have to fix at the pre design stage used for deep water up to one they have been used for deeper water it has no integral storage right usually it is sensitive to top side load draft variation draft is the part of structure under water right so uh, right if you can still recall uh, if this is something some barge right like the ship this is the water level so the part of this structure which is under water right is called the draft right for the stability of the floating structure right usually you have seen the ships or boat are not uh, float at the surface of the water otherwise they will be right because for the stability purpose right so if uh, let's say this is in the partly in the water right so this is the water line so there will be both side hydrostatic forces right and there is in this direction i think the good line i can draw like this so if a wind force from top is pushing here right so these forces will be stabilizing forces right so uh, that's why this draft is also important for the stability right for the stability of the uh, structure right so these forces will be confining so this is another uh, the the tension leg we have this uh, tighten or vertical and this we have the loose catenary shaped cable right the loose cable so the same thing but the support is loose cable it is 
semi submersible because partially it is in water right so due to a small water plane area right which means that touching to the water they are weight sensitive flood warnings is so uh, this is semi submersible on to that used for ultra deep water right semi submersible are held in place by anchors connected to catenary mooring at this catenary shape mooring and these are the long world risers right so on to the subsea system maybe 100 km away this production pipe right this are the risers right or the pipeline production line so they are carrying oil right so if on the plan you can see this is the location of your platform right so uh, the on the subsea uh, this uh, uh, so for example this is at the ground right so maybe 20 30 km this is well head right so well head and uh, this so this is the pumping is here right and from there so the oil is being uh, so these are uh, multiple lines so you can have 30 40 well in this direction it can be connected right because ultra in ultra deep water we can do so this kind of this is the at the seabed level and it is coming like this so these are the production line or uh, from the sub platform you have to inject right so these are the drilling line injection line right so so these are the configuration so this is uh, more and close up picture of semi submersible platform so uh, then uh, and uh, and other type of platform uh, they have come up to the like cylindrical shape and they say deep draft right like 70% it is in water so again it is provide much better stability like this right this is cylindrical 50 meter diameter 60 meter diameter uh, right column and at the top it is be so this is another the french were the first uh, those have introduced right technique right they have introduced so uh, that is spar right so concept of a large diameter single vertical cylindrical support deck right so that this is like this these are very new and emerging concept uh, not uh, now 20 years the first spar platform neptune was installed of the us coast in 1997 compared to other platform it is new spar platform has a tot tot means tighten catenary shape not the loose right they have uh, the uh, tight right this is the mooring which is compared to that so not this is not the loose right so it is like a uh, titan so you will do like semi submersible i have shown loose so it will go like this titan right so uh, this is loose this is this loose catenary mooring is mostly in semi submersible so it is tight titan wire but diagonal to 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 keep intact right this part platform have taut catenary mooring which is this type of mooring and deep draft this is deep draft hands have natural period is so they can move slowly right the uh, as the, the the fixed platform so they move faster than the wave 
movement, right? To 0.5 second. So as we say, to avoid either we have to increase the period of vibration or we have to decrease, right? Not the uh, wave period or wave movement, right? Otherwise resonant. So we say 15 to 20 meter is usually the natural period of wave. So we can design in such a way either the wave, the vibration, the movement of the structure will be slow or the movement of the structure because they can move like this slowly. So go there like this. It may take 30 seconds, which is the natural period of vibration of the structure use for ultra deep water like uh, 2500 or 3000 meter the center of buoyancy is considerably like above because when uh, the next chapter uh, next part we will discuss right so the buoyancy centers it is like a cg of buoyancy right that is the above the center of gravity right because of the shape right right so if this point center of gravity is somewhere so buoyancy will be above right so that it will keep stable right if buoyancy center will be lower than this so it will be topple right next uh, part uh, tomorrow probably we will discuss right Then uh, uh, we uh, for last few years, this is ship, but uh, it is being moved. Ship shaped vessel called FPSO. FPSO is a stand for uh, floating uh, vessel, which is being used for the production of oil storage because this is uh, uh, the uh, main advantage of that, right? It is started with the uh, oil tankers. Right, uh, oil tankers last time because after 20 years they were grounded, right? Because oil tanker have uh, some life. So those grounded oil tanker, so uh, rather than this, so for sustainability for the uh, calm water condition like South China Sea, they say, why not we can use this oil tankers as a platform? Right? So on the deck, they have uh, built the, the facilities for production. And they, because they were already used for storage, so they can have the heavy storage, right? And living quarter and so on. So that's why the vessel, which is being used as a platform for the uh, floating vessel, which is for production, storage, and of taking which means uh, they are because moved here so they can transfer export to the other tanker right so as this i have told you right so top side it is the platform where uh, there are different module you can see module means a small pockets or division in which different activities as like you see this is like rooms or places right and this is open area right module right so top side are the facilities are tailored to achieve weight and space saving right so again the size of platform is depending on to this because uh, we are we cannot afford any size right it is very very critical so we incorporating 
process and utility equipment which is drilling rig injection compressor right because as i said uh, we have to pump right uh, uh, in the beginning of the morning i was telling right so this is for example so we this is the uh, riser or in which the casing which is taking what uh, oil up right so from here right in the well right it is taking oil up so we have to push this oil into this and oil to move here right so from surface or from somewhere we have to use an oh so we used to another thing in the reservoir next to this or another casing or well so it is injecting some pressure gas water or fluid inject right so it will inject in this direction so it will push in the pores that oil will move here and this pressure negative pressure is generating this right so this is called the injection right compressor so we need depending on to this this production platform how many well it is tackling right so we need this compressor so that will inject fluid or that will inject by pressure right so that can push oil up gas compressor gas turbine generators because you have to generate electricity piping hvac instrumentation accommodation for uh, operating personal right uh, typically for full production and drilling platform 7200 staff uh, will be there right all the time if they are in shifting helicap pad because you have to transfer you have many cranes for equipment handling and so on so forth so these are the uh, depending on to these facilities the size of platform and the load on platform is being uh, designed or estimated so as again uh, other parts of the platform which is being given as uh, it is being uh, shown here before this so it is uh, written it is the sea bed right and this is as you can see it is not very flat right so these are some uh, faulty line right uh, some uh, ridge some shapes right irregular shape and these are showing the well head right at that the uh, as we say that the well pumping uh, the the structure onto the well head which is called the christmas tree so uh, like mm, in the fpso one of the advantage we can have a uh, wet tree wet tree mean, meaning to say that the well head is under water right which is at the sea bottom and this riser is being connecting right because uh, this uh, from here all the pump and valves are installed at the top of the well right and this riser is uh, getting the oil which is being storing maybe 1 million barrel or 2 million and this is the uh, the architecture of the well right so the distribution as depending on to that this is the well which are being located well template right so uh, so for all these so this uh, uh, moor this uh, fpso it is being moored over here 
so this is called mooring line or station keeping of the structure so uh, one other parts of the structures are mooring and anchor so this is this cables are the mooring and at the bottom uh, on, on to the uh, seabed they are anchored either these are the piles right some pegs which are there under the ground so because depending on to the how much uh, force right because the wave or current will tend to offshoot the structure right move up. so that will create horizontal and vertical forces in this mooring line right so the anchor should be stronger than the tension induced into this mooring line into this cable right so those are anchored so uh, for this mooring line there will be steel chain like this steel wire rope right synthetic fiber rope are being used they may be either taut like this or they can be loose right so riser as i said this vertical part right pipe uh, used for production drilling and export of oil right because from here and then you are exporting to the refineries or so on so this is the uh, basically it is the pipeline but from ground to platform this part is called the riser so again the risers are vertical riser which is top tension riser in some platform and the uh, loose catenary riser right so this is like a vertical riser right or catenary shape so again because this is, these are carrying fluid right so these are more critical because any leakage will be loss of products and again it will cause the environmental impact right even uh, this point the uh, fit, the joint with the structure right because uh, if heavy tension will be there it will be cray right or in this so this is the most critical right part of the structure because it will carry the product either the oil and gas moving up or injecting fluid or something right so there should be leak free right the leakages will cause the problem right so the offsetting the movement of this left and right movement of the platform is also depending on to the the uh, connection of the riser with that right riser and pipeline so Uh, if uh, these are the loose mooring so the structure can move uh, to a longer right offset but the top tension so the margin of offsetting is less right because this may be cray right so remain in tension due to self weight profiles are designed to reduce load on top side type of rigid flexible right allow vessel motion due to wave loading and right? depending on to that compensate heat so type of motion that we will discuss so uh, later right these are the sub c as i told you this is the well head and at the well head uh, there is the uh, uh, valve and all which is called the christmas tree and uh, because there are multiple well head so every well if we will take the riser at the sea bottom to the platform the, so there will be a number of riser so uh, we can have a central manifold over here right so the transition structure central manifold so say over here Uh, 10 or 20 well are being connected right so all these well the production is coming here or injection fluid is coming here and transporting so into the well and out of the well right 
so it can go to the manifold and from manifold maybe uh, this area one manifold so one riser or two risers are carrying to the platform meaning to say left side riser right uh, well so at this side and this one riser the this side well connected here and a uh, second riser is going so rather than 10 or 20 risers so one or two riser and there will be again some control see uh, bad volume the uh, the uh, control volume uh, template and so on so forth will be there right so this is uh, here i'm just giving the overview right so in the respective part right probably next week all these structure we will go in little bit uh, more conceptual and feature detail okay? so use in wells located on the sea floor to transport extract via riser pipeline to existing production platform movable rigs are used to drill well allowing for so in this case because uh, we cannot do the drilling directly from the platform so we can use the movable uh, drill rigs right which uh, i will show you later right and uh, the advantage is that uh, it can cover a large area right for example this is a large platform right so some well here some well here some well here in the middle right you can put the platform right so it may be let's say from center 20 kilometer 30 kilometer here 20 30 kilometer here 20 30 here 20 30 here so sub c that is one of the advantage of sub c right and it has they have been used more than two kilometer in water depth so as we say for in such case we can use the for drilling because this well right this well right so cannot the platform may be some 30 40 kilometer so we to drill this well right so we need some drilling so we can use the mobile movable also either jack up or some move movable right so here the mobile offshore drilling unit so there are drill ships which are full fledged ship either jacket system in the beginning i have shown you or tender assisted drilling right so one uh, general purpose uh, ship and where whatever facilities needed so that will be assisted by other supporting at different time so for example when you are drilling so the uh, 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 assisted uh, boat will be facilitating now you are putting doing other thing so the the boat with other facilities will be doing so it is standard assisted drilling right at the point of time what type of facilities you are required so that will be supported to the general purpose drill ship so this is like a full fledged drill ship as we say that uh, that can be moved anywhere right so uh, for example uh, in the left region right so three months it will be there the right region right for scattered right uh, just now as i was telling this is let's say for longer time if i put right so let's say this zone so 10 well so it can do 10 well here this zone 
another 20 well this zone so this drill ship can move right when it will finish right the activity it can move right so it is facilitated with all 100 percent but it is costly right because you are leasing normally oil companies are leasing this so they will go either the job is heavy so because in this area 20 well so maybe this uh, uh, leasing the drill ship will be feasible or you will go to jacob right which i have shown you this is another uh, drill ship or for ultra deep water and normally for deeper water it is better and have work water up to uh, this 10,000 feet riser drilling technology is used for drilling from a floating vessel a large uh, diameter so this is the advantages of the drill ship so this is how it works right so this is the derrick and this is the riser going from the top and the uh, drilling work is uh, being done right from here right more explanation is uh, there over here right so we can anchor and so for example in the vicinity uh, if there are 10 or 20 well are there so then leasing this drill ship is maybe economical right but one or two well otherwise we can do this jack up right if the distance are far we can do this jack up right another so again uh, we can mobile right we can float this to the locations once it will there so we can do the jack up operation So usually towed to shallow location and anchored using jack-like legs, right? Uh, legs lower to seabed and hull jack up clear of the sea surface used in water of uh, depth up to once in not very deep water for shallow water, right? But drill ship, you can go for a uh, deeper water, right? So this is, so these are some kind the jacob operation right so these are the uh, jacob and once uh, over the job we can uh, relocate or float to the other side and the tendered assisted drilling right as i said uh, the that the boats will be assisting whatever facilities so you have uh, jack up platform sometimes right not full so the uh, uh, whenever at uh, this week you need these facilities so the ship or boat will carry the facilities so this tender is purpose built uh, and sometimes it is customized self erecting drilling tender barge right with a flat bottom rack stern so depending on the condition so it can be custom made tender support so this is the platform derrick right which is uh, the uh, again the big structure we are in the beginning i have shown you right so drilling is being controlled right so this is like a vertical crane right so this is the uh, drilling uh, well operation is being done so this is the type of structure so <clears throat> So normally, uh, uh, all these right uh, structures like you have seen jacket or the barrack. So usually they are being uh, uh, fabricated 
at the uh, land site right uh, most of the land site uh, workshops or warehouses right uh, like in malaysia if you can uh, in johor pasir godang or in here uh, kanchana in lumut right so they have fabrication big fabrication yard right because they are even compared to concrete they are lighter structure but uh, again uh, lighter does not mean one ton two ton they are uh, 100 thousand ton two thousand ton in weight right so each pieces and they are long structure 50 meter 100 meter long right like this jacket right so uh, there are specialized workshops right a specialized center like if we can have in uh, southeast asia right capel right capel shipyard is one of the most advanced in this region right in singapore although singapore has no oil and gas facilities right uh, so if we can say in asia so the south korea and singapore capel they have the most advanced, but we are also having in MMHE, uh, right? Malaysian heavy and the Kanchana, Safura Kanchana. So like uh, Kapil and, and uh, South Korea, they have the jobs for even Africa. They have the job for Middle East, right? So after fabrication, they use the big barge like that and once the barge will take the structure close to the site so because it will follow the some procedure which is this right launching this is the barge which is scary so the from the barge so these are some steps of uh, uh, taking off or unloading of the jacket structure and floating and it is called up ending right so normally it is being transported in horizontal form like this and it slide so this is not very this steps are being shown but it has to be properly monitored because if heavy stresses will be induced that will affect the life right even you have to control the movement right so first it will be floating, then this crane, right? So slowly it is upending and it is placing onto that, right? So this load out and unloading, right? So this should be follow the particular uh, protocol, right? So this is like even this is the shipyard, right? And this is the place how it will slide onto the barge. So this is the fabrication, the way how it is in the late form, it is being fabricated. Once it fabricate, so because from this bottom, so it will be slide down in a way that the heavy stresses should not induce in any part, right? Which will affect the, the permanent stresses will induce so that will cause the problem in the serviceability of the structure, right? So again, I'm not sure any of you is from Kanchana or MMHE, right? Uh, so, or have been involved, right? And these are some barges, right? So how it is being loaded out, right? So it is sliding again we have to maintain the, the, the speed and the water as well. There should be no movement. So we have to do this break water. So this water uh, is also being protected. There should not be tiding effects, right? Because if it is halfway on the here, halfway there, and if will sink, right? One meter down. So that will be banned, right? It stresses. So, we have to control the water and everything, right? The the surface, right? The the deck surface, barge deck, 
and this should be even right there should not be any movement so we have to have a control right on to that right and this is like you can see protective structure and that right so in this enclosed area barge will come right this break water so outside wave so here the calm water right so this is on the way right how uh, this jacket on the barge it might be carrying from singapore to india singapore to to uh, south africa or elsewhere right so this is now how once it reach so that it unloading from the barge and this is up ending right it is taken and then it is up ending and this is the connector point to the platform right so so much earlier than maybe <clears throat> 5 to 10 kilometer uh, before the uh, actual location right because again you don't have marking now you can use gps for the right location so then it will be floating and appending now it has been reached to that and it will be anchoring right so jacket this will be installed right at location so these are uh, some so final phase jacket is upright position ballast ballast is the operation because uh, we have to uh, maintain because uh, uh, there are two things right buoyancy and ballasting right so uh, when it will be lighter it will be more we have to bring it down so we have to add weight either we have to hang the sandbag or we have to hang the water bag so we will connect some weight right so adding weight to the structure is called the ballasting and add buoyancy is deballasting right so uh, this is you, because the leg is wider so we have to add water or sand into the jacket leg so weight will come so that the jacket will go down transit to set down point several hundred meters as i showed you right further blasting and lowering by crane landing release crane on bottom stability in temporary phase then piling the, then fixed to the pile right so these are some stages and this is the uh, uh, as we say uh, that the concrete platform right so which it was again on the dry dock that it is being floating right uh, in this which is more massive right because this dry dock we need the control right we have constructed this so uh, uh, as it is uh, one so can we take break until two Right, so uh, maybe today uh, I will see. We have uh, tried to finish uh, uh, this part, right? Uh, which I have emailed, or maybe until slide 100, right? So uh, we will see, and the, the rest uh, next part uh, tonight I will complete because I'm trying to improving right then i will send to you right so that we will discuss so you we can we break until two then another 40 minutes to 45 minutes right so then you can take your late late lunch okay so thank you. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, in the second part, uh, we have come to an overview of the offshore structures, right, for different purposes. It is a general uh, overview or conceptual understanding, right? Uh, what are the various activities and what type of structure uh, like you will be uh, familiar now? Uh, what is floating structure? What is the fixed structure? What is the wellhead? What is Christmas tree, right? When the Christmas tree is at the seabed, it is wet tree. When the Christmas tree is installed at the platform bottom, at the surface, it is dry tree, right? So uh, the general terms, you would be now having some sense, right, of oil and gas industry. What is the scope, right? And uh, what is the drilling ship, jackup platform, production platform, drilling platform, right? So injection, so all these terms, uh, you would have some sense, right? So you have being linguistic to the oil and gas language, right? Uh, with that discussion. So now uh, move further. Uh, there are, as we say, the offshore operations are high risk area, right? And even the installations and construction of offshores are a more risky area. A bit uh, overview of the risk involved in offshore installation, uh, we will look over here, right? In this part, the offshore installation risks are mainly centered uh, on the lifting operation and weather, the two things, right? As you, uh, we have been discussed again in the, uh, the previous session, right? How do we unload or load uh, of any heavy structure, right? Then the crane. So whenever we are lifting lighter and lighter objects, maybe a few tons, right? So if they will drop. Or sometimes as we are dealing, the rough weather will add the risk, right? The two major categories which will be uh, increasing the uh, risk into the working of offshore, right? So again, uh, because as the asset manager, uh, and if you are involved, so the risk, dealing with the risk is one of the uh, task of your, yours for safe operation. So offshore installation like fixed platform are badly affected by weather and can be delayed from traveling to location due to bad forecast. As just now, uh, the uh, I have shown you, right? Uh, because you are unloading one, two kilometer before, so that can be affected under bad weather. Upon reaching location, the installation is again weather dependent with almost calm conditions required to final position, right? Which uh, here, Right, so this, all these operations, all these things we need, the very rough weather will affect, right? So uh, these are the risks which can cause the delay, right? Even for this as well, right? So the whole of the offshore installation of the jacket and topside lifts require near perfect conditions. So once the lifting operation are complete, the jacket topside secured, then, then there is very little follow on work, which is at risk. So final commission and startup required checking for transport damage, anything, right? Because during transportation, we have to take any distresses happen, losing of bolt, pipe, joint, etc. before final commissioning, right? And then uh, as uh, the change of physical effects with increasing water depth, right? So th these are the features, right? Which 
will be uh, helping us or understanding of such features will help us for uh, designing retaining uh, the particular type of offshore structure so the uh, physical effects which will be physical effects which will be hitting right which will be happening around the structure so we are talking physically uh, what is uh, happening like the wave right the if this is the structure so the water is flowing right there are two things whenever we are talking wave and current right in the water so uh, it is again mm -hmm, the difference between wave and current right so if we will be taking let's say this is the body of water right so due to wind or due to so the top part right the top part uh, of the water of there will be mass movement of water so this is being moving from here this is simply the wave right and because of this and this is not the overall depth this may be some upper part of the water right so there will be but the current which is the circulation of water particle from top to bottom right so it is the localized movement of water particle circulation this is current right i just uh, uh, explain to you uh, current sometimes you can take a glass jar you put water you put on the stove so you can see right when it will become hot so some bubbles are moving up and down right into the glass jar which you can monitor right which you can see so this is current so the current is uh, again it is the uh, moving of particle but it is localized movement and the wave is the mass movement of water and it will move further right so uh, this will be happening both current and wave they will be passing right so they will affects right they will uh, physically affect the structure right so we would like to see that uh, what will be their effect when the water depth is increasing right so the since we know that uh, the wave is the top mass top water mass which is moving forward right so effect from wave not change with water depth right because it is just like the top 5 meter 10 meter right what is the significant wave height right so the uh, effects of this uh, happening will not be uh, affecting onto the structure right but uh, so but the current which is being changing with water depth right so because current is uh, the velocity of the water particle right which is circulating along this so if the water depth is this so that will be significantly effects right what you can say the vibration right vortex and reduce vibration vortices right the water circulation right circulation so that will be current acting through the whole water column increase the uh, water depth will increase significantly effects on structure right so like in deep water so the current like the riser design or or the pipeline design so the current will significantly effects right so a strong and complex current profile will cause the more challenges and issues right and increase importance if current load and load effects which is vortex induced vibration so vortices uh, right so 
the the current will cause the with this object so that the vortices like uh, contours will so the current uh, will effect uh, with the uh, increase water depth so that the effects may become significant length of structure effect which is hydrostatic pressure right gamma times h right the hydrostatic pressure gamma is the density of water h is the depth of water so depth of water will be uh, greater so gamma h will be higher right so the hydrostatic pressure will be increased so the size of the structure will be different that's why when we are saying deeper water the jacket like platform is not effective because uh the the effects of current will increase the the hydrostatic pressure will increase so the size of the leg will be uneconomical right the, it will be the costlier solution right so increase weight and loads on the sub system increase hang of loads right because uh, on their increase system flexibility complex installation and uh, retrieval operation so these are the length effects right temperature so again uh, when you are going deeper so the temperature gradient right for example Ar uh, arabian gulf surface temperature is 50 degree c right and 1 km deep water so the temperature may be uh, close to my, uh, minus or uh, for example or even 10 degree c so the temperature difference and the steel structure length effect so uh, the the uh, delta t and coefficient of thermal expansion will cause the significant effects on to your design right so the temperature will also change the design so low ambient temperature below 0 degree c may occur right in deeper water so increase re risk of hydrate formation right because uh, the 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 deposition right mitigation and remediation important right so that is the lower part and pressure effect so water depth pressure so these are the uh, some change of physical effects that are being considered in the design of offshore structure oh this is uh, uh, sorry chapter 2 not chapter 1 right uh, by right it is i put wrong chapter one. so this is uh, chapter 2 we can start so uh with this introductory part so now we will go uh, more deeper on to the deep water development right that is correct chapter 2 so uh, little bit history as we have seen the first uh, offshore structure was built in 1947 which was in 6 meter water depth that was a drilling platform only for drilling karmak rig number 16 was the first offshore rig in the gulf of mexico in louisiana us that was out of sight of land it was installed in 1947 in 20 ft water depth tied 10 mile away about 15 km away from the uh, uh, coastline right so that was the first drill and this is 2009 the perdido is far deep water platform in the deepest floating oil platform in the world at water depth of about 8000 ft which was if you can say uh, about 2500 or uh, uh, 2600 uh, meter water depth it was installed in 200 miles away from the coastline which is about 300 km away from the shore and is operated by shell 
in the Gulf of Mexico, again, the same uh, Texas area, right? So that is about uh, now uh, we can say 53, 63, 73, right? When I take it was 63 years old, but now 73 years old, right? Ego in uh, this. So the uh, first uh, today platform are being installed in depths exceeding 2,500 meter. World tallest structure was installed offshore in 1979 in 360 feet of water depth. Today, a fixed platform stand in excess of uh, now uh, 1,800, 600 meter water depth. First subsea tree installed. Subsea tree mean, meaning to say uh, the uh, subsurface uh, wellhead which was installed, a wet tree, right? In 1963, in, 20, uh, in 100 meter water depth. Today, subsea trees are being installed in depth more than 300,000 meter, right? Three kilometer, right? So this is the advancement of technology, right? in 50 to 60 years experience. So uh, that is the march towards deep water, right? The 50 year march, right? So if you can say, uh, which is, uh, that was taken in 2014, right? This, so uh, where uh, this uh, deep water, uh, as we say, that this is the water depth in fit, right? Or so from uh, now we are, right? Uh, this you can see, we are even in excess of that, right? Uh, so these are in different location, right? And subsea. So this is our, uh, what you can say, this side is in meter. So we are almost uh, X work, right? In three kilometer water depth, right? And maybe we can uh, reach uh, further. The drillers were drilling in deeper, wat deeper water long before we had the production capacity. The time and depth gap between drill and production is closing fast. Right, but because the drilling was doing in deeper, but now production is also being given. 10,000 feet has been the water depth threshold for almost 10 years, right? So the deep water vision then and now, right? As uh, this is the change, right? Of the profile, like we are having this structure. So now the most important question, why deep water, right? As we are looking future oil demand will remain strong, right? In the beginning, right? I have told you is still the uh, more than 65 to 70% energy is being contributed by the hydrocarbon, right? And in my lifetime, uh, I believe hydrocarbon will remain the dominant and uh, the energy demand is continuously increasing, right? So uh, the shallow water depth or the onshore, uh, the, the reserve, uh, they have been exhausting, right? So the only solution is that moving into further water depth. So this is one of the uh, example, right, of that. So deep water is where the remaining big reserves are located. And it is expected the reserves are much more than what is uh, being there in shallow water or, or, or into the onshore. So deep water will account for 25% of global offshore production uh, in 2015, right? It has reached and compared to it was, uh, this slide was uh, taken from a report published in 2009, right? So in 2009, 
uh, sorry 2013 it was in 2013 it was just within two years it has reached to 25 percent so and behind that the technologies allow economic development in deep and ultra deep and these are the uh, operators working in deep water right So factors driving, as I say, gl global demand, traditional field, declining production and reserve oil supply jitters, pressure to diversify supply, energy economic, right? The more you can get and technological advent or advancement. So this is the profile, new deep water basin all around the world deep water basin which were there in 2000 2008 so you can see uh, this is the area where malaysian uh, deep water in south china sea is there uh, this is australian side indian ocean and uh, this is the area uh, where M south china sea reserves are there in deep water and deep water has high potential right so this is some statistics right onshore shell uh, which is shallow water and deep water right so average discovery size right so that is very high potential right when you got you got very heavy reserve right and that is why we do heavy investment right because you are uh, expenditures in uh, of onshore site are very low like for example most of the arab saudi oil they tap from uh, shore right and it costs them just like 10 dollar a barrel right whereas here it might cost you 15 dollar a barrel here maybe, uh, for example, eighteen dollar a barrel, but uh, here uh, your daily production will be uh, one fifth or one tenth of the deep water. So your production cost is high, but your production is also high, so you can make the bigger business. So this is, I think, in the morning, I have uh, told you, right? Uh, these are the type of structure. So three deep water system group, dry tree system, which is fixed platform, compliant tower, TLP, dry tree, which means that the well head is being taken at the top of platform, right? The well uh, pumping operation, right? So in this group, right, the well head are put place at the platform. Right? This is the well head from the well are taking at the top, right? In this platform. And wet tree system where the platform will just receive, but the pumping will be done at the ground, seabed, right? So from here, like it is being there. Right, so this is well head here and pumping in here, like here. So new generation TLP, uh, we do conventional FPSO, right? Spar type control boy. So in this type of mix, dry and wet tree. So the far away, the close by well are from the top and the far away, in this platform are being so these are the uh, three uh, type of categories of the uh, well group so this is some uh, statistics in different countries as you can see uh, uh, here india one fpso one semi Australia 15 FPSOs, right? In this, so this is 
two part this is the location of australia right this area and this area indian ocean and this side uh, so there are 15 fps so this is south china sea in uh, southeast asia where there are 22 fps so i think uh, including malaysia right and one semi i think this is gumusat in malaysia uh, all three deep water are malaysia right tlp is uh, uh, malakai i think and spar is the first kk right so all three in malaysia uh, malaysian south china sea near Saba region right the three deep water site so this is some profile right and these are uh, in 2015 or 14 251 uh, such uh, installations were there so uh, the predominant uh, there are four primary industry recognized floating production solution accepted because proven many years of operational history functional used for a large variety of function wet or dry tree scalable wide range of top side payload right uh, you can an adaptable applications worldwide right so these are the most predominant floater tension lag semi sub spar and fpso Uh, so fundamental com uh, concept differentiator so each of that can be differentiated with respect to their functionality right spar dry or wet trees right so in spar we can have tlp dry or wet trees but again it is deep draft right so different kind of motion it can be so wet Tree, the semi sub are mostly with wet trees and uh, FPSOs with wet trees, right? So, is scope and component of offshore. So, if you are working, right? So, in the planning and design, so the, this is the scope, right? Because the whole project you are handling. So this slide is showing these components are all interrelated. So we can say there are four major uh, categories, four major components. Drilling, right? Uh, substructure, which is the supporting structure and foundation, processing, and export, right? So drilling, whenever drilling is structure. Our, so the next is strategies. So whenever we are selecting the system, so we would like to see whether uh, there will be dry tree, which means the well head, we 100% well head in this project will be onto the platform. So uh, we will go to this type of platform, right? Because uh, dry tree, either SPAR or TLP, right? Wet tree, either this or mix so we can go here or we can mix this with this right like in kk right so we have to take uh, this kind of strategy so wet tree so the drilling operation in wet tree so we will be using mobile offshore drilling unit right in the beginning uh, i have seen right so you can do Right, you uh, no need because you are not uh, uh, coordinating through platform. So you need mobile, either jack-up system or drill ship or tender assisted. But dry tree, we can have mix. Uh, some pre-drill, pre -drill, <coughs> we can do by the time platform is being installing and erecting, right, the partly. And then we can use the platform rig and tender assisted right so uh, this is uh, we can make the strategy again as economics will control right 
then substructure uh, which is platform will be resting on floating or fixed so if floating structure so we have options fpso tlp semi sub spark or we can have mix right fpso with semi sub if you can go uh, that uh, uh, just uh, we have the uh, kk right in malaysia so we have semi uh, uh, spark with fpso gumusut semi sub with fpso right so that is our strategy fix we can have jacket a compliant tower or we can have the gravity base right uh, processing either uh, there is nothing processing which means the oil which we are pumping crude so there are many impurities right which we have to separate right although uh, it is being refined into the uh, uh, into the refineries right so sometimes uh, uh, for example if you have a pump 100 barrel of oil right crude uh, maybe there are 20 percent things which you will transport and they will be the major impurities right so if you can process them at the platform so what 80 percent you are so this 80 percent will send 100 percent to the refinery so the there will be less wastage onto the refinery and this waste you will be uh, you will not be transporting so you will save so that is the processing separation method but again depending on to this so you can do the full processing partial processing or none so none which means in this case uh, nearby for example uh, there are the uh, marine pipelines right so many shallow water platform in karte they are connected to tcot tarangano crude oil terminal which is 50 to 100 kilometer so uh, no need for this so that least subsea to the host right which means uh, to the refinery or crude oil terminal right uh, either the host or subsea to the shore right uh, partial so uh, this will be uh, 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 here we have to do when separation can be done full or partial right and then export right we have to send so through pipeline which is okay no question right so uh, through export we have shuttle tanker right uh, we have to host right power generation the injection power plant right this is for the gas so these are uh, the scope where we have to work we have to design we have to maintain right so either you are maintaining the wet trees so you are looking for that you are maintaining working on to that right so this is this slide is showing the overall scope of the uh, is the offshore particularly or deep water this is the field development solution right how you have to develop the field this uh, slide is being showing like uh, the the host which is the platform right so these are our choices right and you can see that these are the subsea development right so a scattered field right so just now as i was telling these well head are being connected to the centralized manifold and from there one or two these are transporting right uh, to to the semi sub or these are to the host right so this is the uh, this is what you have seen here it is at the seabed and this is our uh, platform right so whenever we are doing this right field so development 
so this is one of the area which is the primary engineering of because first as the overall oil and gas as in the morning exploration and appraisal right so field development planning it will cover into that right acquisition acquisition is the first part right the block so normally when when uh, the government no, the ministry right like mineral department in usa and i think again mineral resources ministry in malaysia they hold right because patron so they they uh, oh, they open the bid and normally the uh, consortium because norm uh, like for example almost uh, 99 or 100 percent uh, projects where patronas right will also go as a partner right and pet but uh, patronas uh, also because for technical high risk area so partner with other companies like shell shell and Berger, right murphy oil so two three partners so they say okay 30 30 percent or 40 percent so they they acquire the site and initial investment is being done right these people a few million so exploration and appraisal then evaluate uh, so in this once you have come up so you can, are evaluating so here you are doing concept selection right we are concept selection you will go what where it will be this what will be this here tentatively so that is the field development solution so that will cover up to that here you can say that uh, 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 you will go for uh, 20 well or 30 well which will be scattered like this right then after that you will freeze the concept after this completing the study then we will do the engineering where we do the detailed design right the concept is frozen then design will frozen then the uh, type of design analysis environmental loading then execution right and then it is handover operate and abundant right this is decommissioning that's why in the morning i say i will do so in this stage the aim is robust technical solution plus minus 40 percent cost estimate not 100 percent you can do right uh, highlight key risk in here the scope of working right overall economics identify outstanding data confirm project is economic to justify ongoing investment in uh, this evaluate and design aim collect additional data what you didn't do select prefer option and now you, you are going towards accuracy plus minus 20 percent cost estimate identify risk economic sufficient definition to allow engineering feet front and engineering design to commence right you can do and then uh, in detail engineering you can come with plus minus five percent cost estimate right the variation so this is the uh, scope what it is being needed so this is uh, for another explanation the life cycle what is the field uh, discovery is the first reservoir structure can this two up, up number two appraisal so one two three years normally right it, the discovery it is within month or uh, you can do right uh, with seismic survey so appraisal it is one to three years so because here you will go for the more detail right reservoir connectivity reservoir reserves so on this evaluation you need geology understanding of the geologic structure number of flow units so this is because why this time is needed rock properties right you have to collect sample fluid properties 
because what type of oil is there what type of gas what is the viscosity heavy oil right light oil something uh, driving mechanism right what type of injections you do no pro number of producing well how many well number of injection well right uh, uh, you have to use those well for injecting expected work over so this is the scope that's why it is uh, three one two three year drilling completion flow line facilities development phase one to five years this is the scope then production right 10 to 50 years depending on to that decommissioning uh, is the last scope right so this is the oil and gas field life cycle right normally 50 years is the maximum uh, so uh, i think uh, uh, we are on slide 94 so today i will stop over here because now tomorrow this engineering site we can is first session we can discuss and then i will also tonight mm, uh, fine tune the next series of slides chapter three right uh, so that uh, we will discuss tomorrow it is about quarter to three as i said by that time i will not take your lunch right and afterwards i have another class at five o'clock so I will also take some break, right? So is that okay? Any question? Today, uh, you uh, only four of you attended. You are six, I think. Is okay? Any question? So uh, the recording is almost over four hours. So we just discussed that roughly four hours every day we will discuss. So, right. So with that, uh, thank you very much. So tomorrow about 10, uh, we will meet again. And uh, so we will uh, just go uh, by the, another four hours uh, tomorrow, right? So. Uh, that will be fine. Okay. So that's all. See you tomorrow.